Okay. So now we're going to look at a few practical design considerations for uh, designing Class E amplifier in CMOS. So the first consideration we've already discussed, remember that there can be a very high voltage swing at the drain of the transistor. And the way that we might tackle this is to use a cascode. And you can note that in many CMOS processes, there are more than just the standard uh, uh, high speed FETs, there uh, tend to be IO FETs that can be used uh, to handle higher voltage. Now, the other thing is that it's not generally practical to make a choke inductor in a CMOS process because the inductors, as they get larger, tend to be very lossy. So we can make this inductor not a choke. And the only difference is that when it isn't a choke, uh, it will have a finite value of susceptance. If it was a choke, its susceptance value would be equal to zero. You'll also note here that I've replaced the series resonant circuit and uh, inductor with a matching network, in this case a TAP-C matching network. The goal of this matching network is just to provide an impedance equal to R opt plus JX opt. Looking, uh, looking towards the uh, load. So we're going to present this to the transistor. And note that the susceptance at the drain of the transistor just needs to totally be equal to B op. So B op is equal to B CD, the susceptance of, the, of any capacitance that we add, plus B C par, the susceptance of any parasitic capacitance at the drain node of the transistor, minus BL, which will be the susceptance of the inductance if it isn't a choke. Now we've noted that the efficiency of a class E power amplifier should ideally be 100% if the, we can perfectly shape the network so that the drain and current uh, don't overlap, and assuming that we had, say, lossless passives so that we didn't have any loss in our matching network. But we did also note that there are some non-idealities uh, even beyond that. So the most glaring one is that our switch in reality is a MOS transistor, and so it has some switching loss. Uh, this leads to ohmic loss um, uh, in the device. Uh, next, uh, we did note that we have matching network loss. We'll also note that there is a CGD uh, due to the MOS transistor that might be relaxed a bit if we do cascode the device. But if we have CGD, we get feed through from the input to the output. Finally, we'll note that any real device has a finite turn on time and turn off time. And this means that we'll practically always have some drain current and drain voltage overlap. Now we've already discussed matching network losses before. We will calculate those exactly as we did uh, in uh, prior lecture, lecture 11. Uh, and we've already looked at the impact of RSW uh, and the ohmic loss. So let's look at the effect of CGD. So here we have our switch, and we note that there might be some CGD bridging the input to the output. And so if I put a switching waveform at the input of this transistor, what I know is going to happen over at the, uh, at the drain side of the transistor is at the instance of the switching, I'm going to have a, a peak that will be dissipated uh, according to the time constant at the node. So I know that ideally I've tried to shape the pulse in my network so that I create this, this voltage waveform that looks something like this and it goes to zero and the derivative goes to zero right at the instance of switching. But because of the switch, it's going to pop back up and then exponentially decay. And this is going to happen over and over again. So I'm going to dissipate just a little bit of power due to that CGD uh, in every cycle. And this is all due to feed through. So if we were to go and examine what the practical efficiency of a class E power amplifier would be, it would look something like this. So our practical drain efficiency would be equal to P out divided by P out plus PR switch plus PCN plus P overlap, plus P feed through. Now, uh, this does degrade the efficiency below 100%, but still it's generally better than a linear amplifier. 
it is using the MOS device as a switch, which is what the MOS device is optimized to be. It's not optimized to be a current source. But it does have some drawbacks. This power amplifier needs linearization. You cannot pass a signal that has that, that has uh, amplitude modulation through this amplifier and maintain uh, good fidelity with the um, with the that signal without using some linearization circuit. It also has high voltage stress on the drain of the transistor and we need the ability to switch the input. So in the next lecture we will look at a few um, more modifications we can make to the class E network and then we will also start to look at the class F network.